Do you guys hear that? Is that boss music? Go naked and just go with the sword and that's it. What do I do with all this? <laughs> it says it in the title. <laughs> I'm a slut for roguelites. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Unearthing Games podcast. I'm your lead excavator, Nick, and today I'm joined by Erica. Hi. And we dig games. So, um, what you been up to this week, Erica? How's, uh, how's it been going since last time? Uh, it's been... It's been pretty good. I played a few games. Uh, The one I'm going to talk about, I feel like I played another game. We've been playing some Stardew Valley. Uh, Yes. (laughs) We haven't gone back to our Minecraft, which I'm a little sad about. Um, Or the Nancy Drew game I was playing, which I'm also sad about. We will. I think we need to actually work on our scheduling. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many things we want to do that it's very easy for us to get caught on one and then like let the five other things fall to the wayside yeah because i also want to make sure i schedule myself like some valheim time yeah (laughs) okay sorry okay so you've been playing a lot of games but not the ones that we talked about before so what have you been playing i just said i've been playing stardew and minecraft and then the the game i'm gonna talk about this week um yeah i think that's pretty much it i started crocheting a new thing Organizing my craft room has been my goal. It's been a, a bit of a mess since the end of last year. I need to clean it up. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I've seen you. Like, you've got this cool little, um, it's a yarn winder, right? Is that, is that the official term? Yeah. Because um, I know there's that other thing you have that, like, expands out, like that weird thing from high school. That's you a know? swift. Yeah. A swift. But the swift does not wind yarn. The swift does something else. Even mm-hmm. though you do wrap yarn around the swift, it serves different... She got the cool yarn winder guy, like, strapped onto the side of a little table here. Mm-hmm. And you just hook that bad boy up and get to cranking. And it makes yeah. the cool um, cakes, right? Yeah. Cake of yarn? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All flavors of cakes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, obviously, I know you've been doing all that. Um, so, yeah. I, I, other than, I know we drew, we drew Jacob in the Stardew Valley. That was great. Yeah. I think we've been having a great time. Granted, we did like restart like three times, right? Recently, only once. But before that, we had restarted <laughs> before I had gotten my graphics card. Yeah. Because we had tried to play it before and the game would just chug for you. Well, see, um, so I'm, if anyone knows the answer, I'm still having issues where my Stardew chugs sometimes. And it, I, I mean, I've only been playing multiplayer, but it shouldn't be chugging. I've got plenty of RAM. I've got a good graphics card like i don't understand what it is but it seems like we were playing through and we got to like the egg festival and it was so slow during the egg festival like i couldn't like move anywhere to collect eggs and so i just like stood there because it was chugging so slow and i i don't really know what's causing that so if anyone has any answers let me know <laughs> <laughs> please present thy stardew troubleshooting solutions in yes. the comments yeah, but part of me, like I started to grin over here. I was like, is she really having technical difficulties or is this an excuse for why Jacob beat her at the egg festival? No, it was chugging <laughs> so bad. You came over. You saw how it I was. Did, I did see it. it. was It was like watching a little flip book. Yeah, yeah. it was really bad. Yeah. So that that's a little upsetting. It did. The last time we played, it wasn't as bad, but it'll happen every so often where it just like slows down and i lost like fish doing that and it it was it was annoying like i was just about to catch it with the treasure chest and then it started chugging and i lost it yeah that's the worst because fishing is like the most satisfying experience that entire game yeah so (laughs) So that was very sad but yeah so if anyone has any recommendations i will i am willing to try anything (laughs) at this point (laughs) but yeah other than that um so yeah other than playing started with you and jacob because we've done that several nights this week Mm-hmm. like into the wee hours of the night where Jacob being the old man that he is, is like, oh, I'm tired. I need to go to bed. Uh, and we're both like, really? All right, sure. These younglings, they don't, they don't know what it is anymore. <laughs> they don't make them like they used to. No. Uh, <laughs> but um, other than that, I've been playing some Valheim, a little bit of that. I've been playing, uh, I, Ooh, I did beat loop hero. So I beat okay. Loop Hero. I got all the way to the final boss. It was pretty cool. I'm not going to spoil anything. I did do the experiment we talked about last time where I just let the hero go. 
Yeah. I just let them walk and I didn't do anything. They only made like five laps before just the basic slimes killed them. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of sad, but I guess it makes sense. Like, cause it's expecting you to, cause like as they're killing the monsters, they're also getting loot off of them and it's expecting mm-hmm. you to swap out the loot. Yeah. So if you're not doing that, it's like they're like two damage sword is hitting a guy with like 50 health. So a, yeah, they'll, so, they'll die before they so kill him. It was a cool experiment in thought. <laughs> it was disappointing in actual implementation. I just wanted to know what would happen. Well, hey, I mean, that, that's science, right? I mean, yeah. some people cause explosions. We have guys die in digital games. Yeah. So, um, other than that, ooh, I am building a bookshelf or bookshelves, right? Yeah. You're you're helping me, but it's this is this is my baby. I'm so excited. We've had um a really crummy walmart bookshelf that has had all of our books on it and our um our upstairs spot came with like a nice closet for all of our board games right but Mm -hmm. we've been buying a lot of board games yeah so (laughs) we're kind of running out of room and so i decided that i wanted to make a bookshelf and so yeah so i'm making bookshelves so i'm very excited about that we're gonna have all of our books and board games on them Mm -hmm. i'm gonna have pictures of this on our instagram at unearthing games so make sure you check that out. I'll have a whole, this is what the corner looked like before. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Here it is after, you know, the whole magical sparkle dust wipe and all that stuff. You know, uh-huh. it'll be great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm super excited. I, I just put uh, some stain on it today. So it felt really good. You know me, I don't usually do craft projects. All no, right? you don't. And, and I've been trying, like walking you through the, the process of this and it's been fun. Nah, it's, you're annoyed with me because I just don't know anything. <laughs> well, it's it's different when I'm when I'm telling you like, oh, you you just do this, and then I just sit there and I watch you. And I was like, I guess I can help. <laughs> I know it's I, your project. I, but. <laughs> I was like, I, I I would like it to be known that I never said please help me. You, when, when you were like, oh, I'm just gonna chill, and I was like, all right, well, I'll go and sand the boards, or mm-hmm. oh, I'll go and stain the wood. You know, you didn't ha- like you could have stayed napping. I was fine with you napping while I stained the wood. <laughs> but like. I just feel so useless if I'm not like if there's a project going on, I need to help. I can't just not and just sit around and not do anything because I even sat out there and I just sat there watching you stay and I was like, I well, can see, just that's, help. That's the thing. Like if I'm just sitting there, then yes, I'll want to help. But like if there's something going on and like I could be playing a video game, then I'll probably go play a video game. That's how I've been in the past. Now that I've started doing this and I'm like, wow, <laughs> like that's it, exactly how you've been in the past <laughs> with all the projects I've done. You've just been like, oh, yeah, go do your thing. <laughs> Like I said, I mean, I, I will say that staining the wood is boring. Um, it's not. Well, okay. it's not. It's not that it's boring. We need to build our work, our actual workbench, because for me, it's more of like I don't like having to just be like hunched over on the floor, like wiping stain on these boards. <laughs> like if we had a table or something where I could be standing at it doing the work and all that, that'd be different. Yeah, I mean, that's our next project. I'm, I'm an old man, you know. My back starts to like going out. I'm like, oh, oh god. god. <laughs> my lumbago you know all that but yeah. so very excited about that we should have that probably done and i don't know hopefully i'll have the pictures up a couple of days after this podcast launches hopefully but we'll yeah, see yeah we should be done by then we're already like 70 percent of the way there yeah the the boards are cut sanded stained we just need to clear coat them and then that's it you just put them up so yeah sanding wood is like the most satisfying thing i don't really understand how like you know you turn like this crummy rough piece of wood into like this silky smooth surface it's just (laughs) it's nice but yeah so so that's um that's that's been my thing um yeah i guess we've had a fairly uneventful week (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) well all right well i guess why don't we jump right into it erica why don't you tell us about the game you played this week Sure. So I am very excited about this game. It's one of my new favorites, I think. <laughs> this is The Battle of Polytopia, and this is developed and published published by Midjawan Games. I think I looked it up. I think that's how you say it. Um, it's, sorry, Midjawan AB. It doesn't have games on it. Um, but this game is tagged as a strategy turn-based single player 4X colorful game. Okay. Um it is very colorful. Wait. It's it's Wait, colorful was the last one for you? Yeah. Mine says war. 
<laughs> I mean, they're both true. <laughs> well, they, they, they are. I, I don't understand why Steam does this. Like, stop, stop, stop gender curating our, our tags. But it is very colorful. It's very pretty. The art style is very cute. I don't know what you would describe it as. Like it's it's polytopia, so polygon art style, I guess. Maybe like like yeah, is it, is it like a low poly? I I don't know what that that term is. Where it's kind of got a like a dated sort of graphic style. Yeah, it's adorable though. It's very polished. Um, so this game, when I played it the first time, um, when you first start up the game, it puts you into one of the standard, um, goes of the game, and so the the base version of this game is you get thirty turns. Uh, you you pick a different tribe or people to begin with. It's all like ancient. Yeah, I think the game calls them and... tribes. I just saw uh, one of the pictures on Steam has a list, and I think it says yeah regular tribes. tribes at the top. So yeah, so you pick a different tribe, and each one starts with a different piece of tech based on just that specific tribe. There was one that started with writing. There's some that start with archery different things like that but um you pick a tribe and you have 30 turns to get the highest score possible and the way you do that it's kind of like a little civ light type of game so you start out and you have one um military unit and you send him around the little grid to explore and when you start everything's covered in clouds so you got the whole fog of war thing and you move your little guy around and he finds new things you can conquer little villages and the way you expand is by um, by the tech. So your tech tree gives you um, options to research different things like writing, hunting, uh, foraging, fishing, things like that. And the more you go down these trees, the more specific you get. So if you go down gathering, you get to farming and cultivation. And if you go down fishing, you go to sailing and navigation. So you can go sailing out on the oceans and stuff. But... Um, the the way you increase your city, the more food you have, the, your city will grow. Um, and if your cities are connected with roads, which is down the riding tech tree, um, they'll also gain population based on them being connected, different things like that. And there's different buildings you can get that'll increase your population. Um, and it's I think it's a really cute game. So you just go through and you're you're exploring this world. And when you first start, I think it puts you in a map with two other tribes. So you can find them and you can like wage war against them. So that's where war <laughs> is a proper tag, I guess, for Steam. Um, and you can wage war against them and take out their little units with your units and take over their little villages and stuff like that. And it's a really cute game. So the base version of this game is... You get 30 turns and you're just trying to get the highest score possible. And then there's other versions or other game modes, I guess is the best way to say it, um, that you can play. One of them is domination. So you pick how big your maps, well, you pick how many people, how many adversaries you want to be, want to have, and then you pick your difficulty. And domination, you just go until you completely overtake the map you wipe out all the other tribes and i did that with the with the two tribe thing and it it, it lasted because it tells you how many turns at the end as part of your scoring um i think it lasted like 49 turns out of so it'd be like 19 over the 30 usual turns you would get okay. but um I, I i love this game i think it's really cute it's really simple to learn there's a lot to it, um, and then we, there's also I know it says single player, but there's also the ability to do multiplayer in this, um, and we tried one game of that, um, but yeah, and it, it worked really well. And this one is even one where you can set your turn limits to be like five hours, I think was the longest one, and you could just you know do your turn and then pass it, and you could just like text the other person, "Hey, I did my turn. You have five hours." And that person throughout the course of the day can go and log into the game, do their turn and pass it off to you. So it's a good game to do kind of like a, a like in the olden days when they would do like mail chess. Game by mail. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'm moving, you know, rook, uh, king's rook to, you know, to the queen's bishop. And like you mail it off and like three weeks later, you get my letter saying my move. Yeah, <laughs> except it's like five hours, but I think that was really cool because I know you mentioned that you guys, you and your brothers wanted to do something like that with Civ, but it was, you guys were having trouble setting up a server and stuff like that. Yeah. But this one is really cute. And it's, it, like I said, it's like a Civ light. There's not as much 
detail into this, but I think it's just enough where it's a fun game and you can get a lot out of this. I've played so many rounds of this already. <laughs> I keep I keep hearing it has like this nice the like chill music that goes as you mm -hmm. play. And I keep hearing the music come on over on your side of the table and I'm like, oh there she goes again. Yeah. <laughs> I love this game. It's cute. <laughs> it it is really cute. Like honestly, I I'm tempted to buy my brother's copies of this. Just to just to get like if we could get them to join into a like a bigger multiplayer game, you know? Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm worried about is I feel like Philip and Jacob would scoff at it for its simplicity. Oh. Because I mean, because it is a Civ Light style yeah. game, which I mean, like, I think if you go in expecting that, though, it's a ton of fun, mm -hmm. you know? Like, because I mean, Civilization has so much probably overcomplication for yeah. how the game works, and it, it draws it out where the game goes way longer than it probably needs to go. Mm -hmm. I think this checks all the boxes, like, because... Uh, Maybe it's just me, and I don't generally play games like Civ and all that very often. Yeah. But this checks the boxes for me. Like, I really liked this. Like, and I, I mean, and, and what's really cool is that I, I thought the tech tree is just complex enough. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, ev everything is based off of the, like, the little star currency that you get from your cities and stuff, yeah. right? And so that's you spend that on units, and you spend that on just everything yeah you spend it to to build roads to make farms to to hunt animals to go fishing you have to spend stars for everything and you get more stars by upgrading your cities yeah. or having yeah. more cities gotta spend money to make money yeah so so i, I really like that and i like that being that they all only start with one tech and a tree mm -hmm. and with one exception it seems like none of them really have like an overt <laughs> advantage um I inadvertently picked the one that has an advantage yeah. in, our, in our multiplayer match to your chagrin. Yeah, so far, I've played five of the different tribes, I think, and all of them, I think what you have to be careful of is if you do a multiplayer game that if you, when you're picking tribes, make sure you pick tribes that don't have um, the the initial hunting, foraging, farming, fishing type tech trees. Because those are the ones that will get you your city upgrading faster. And so that's the issue that we ran into where you had hunting and you were just able to go out and hunt everything right away. And I had like archery, which yeah. didn't really impact anything <laughs> except I could make archers right away. Um, but so I was still slowly progressing to try to research, you know, all of the, the food production and stuff. And he already had that, so his sitting was able to grow a lot faster um, to the point where when we met, he had like eight super units and I was just running we were, around with we little We were building archers. temples, we were exploring existentialism, <laughs> we, you know, yeah. what does it mean to be a polygon, you know? But yeah, so I, I would say just, just be careful as far as like choosing which tribe you start with if you're playing a multiplayer to not choose one that starts with one of the food texts because- or Make sure everybody picks picks one that starts with those. Yeah, you have to do either all or none because, like I said, it was very yeah. unbalanced when we played the played it. Unless that you're way. unless you're cool with going in at a disadvantage, which I don't know who yeah. would be like, you know, <laughs> ha ha! I'm such a great gamer. Please take a step up above me. Yeah, you know? I guess some people are like that. But yeah, I I really enjoy this game. It's so cute, very simple, and especially the the thirty round um base like the original version of the game. Where you you play thirty rounds and you're trying to get your best score, it goes by so fast. So you can play uh, like so like like I said, I've oh, played yeah, so it's... many rounds of this just sitting here like okay, next round, next round. I obviously am not getting the high scores because they're like close to two hundred thousand, and I'm getting like fifty thousand. Yeah, I don't game. understand. That. I think I think I I think I got like thirty and the because after excuse me after we um played our multiplayer thing i was like this is actually pretty cool maybe i'll give this a try and so i did play one solo mm -hmm. one solo match and yeah it went super fast like i was so surprised yeah granted i only made like 30 30 000, 20 000 points <laughs> in comparison to like the 250 or whatever that's on the leaderboards i don't yeah. know how the heck they do that yeah but I was still, I mean, I, I was happy. I, I, I won by the skin of my nose. The, the samurai people were, were, they were waging war on me. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> send in the, send in the archers, fight them off. Yeah. And so. But yeah, I, I love this game. It's cute. <laughs> the maps are a little small. I feel like maybe if you add more, um, 
adversaries, you'll get bigger maps. Well, because I think it, I think you can add, if I'm reading this correctly, you can go up to 15 players in the game. Yeah. Could you imagine how big that map is? Like, wow. I kind of wanted you to do a, a domination type with of thing. With 15 players? With 15, with 15 of the AI. Like, that would be pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, man, do it. You got you to gotta do it now. I, I want to know how that goes. That To me, that map would be just insane. It's huge, yeah. So... <laughs> And it looks like it's got some DLC. I'm guessing those are probably just other tribes, right? Yeah, it looks like all the DLC are different tribes you can get. Which, that's a okay. thing. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that, that, that's cool. I mean, if It you know. starts with initially, how many tribes does it start with? It's, a, it's quite a few. Um, I've, I haven't even picture. played most of them. It's 12. Yeah. 12 tribes initially. Yeah. And they're all based on, like, historical groups, like... Mm -hmm. Like like one of the guys, his his picture is a dude wearing like a samurai helmet, and one guy is like a Roman legionnaire, and one guy's a Viking. So they're all mm -hmm. based on like historical factions, you know, very civ like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I really like this game. Um, but yeah, so that was Battle the, the Battle of Polytopia, um, by Midjuan Ab. They did a fantastic job. Yeah, Midjuan, say kudos. We <laughs> we we love this game. 12 out of 10, we'll play again. I was looking at the reviews just now. One of them says that this is also available as a, an app game for free, a mobile app game. Yeah, I noticed that because like, I went to Google it so I could bring up the page so I could you know, have some brief reference in front of me while you mm -hmm. were talking about it. And the first thing that came up was like a, a Google App Store uh, yeah. link for it. I, I think like, that would be a good starter too if you don't know for sure if you want to. It's not that expensive. It's what? Uh... Wait, for fifteen dollars? Fifteen on Steam. I bet you in the App Store, it's probably somewhere between five and fifteen. Oh well, so. th in the comments, that's what I'm saying. It says that it's free. Oh. As of March six, someone posted that this is also on mobile for free. So if you want to see what the game is like before buying, you can do that. Oh, Which awesome. I would totally encourage. <laughs> yeah, I I will I will include a link in the field notes mm -hmm. for um. For the Apple for the Apple Store and the Android Store, assuming it's in both, so yeah. we'll have links to those <laughs> below. Try it out; it's amazing. I I, I honestly ha wouldn't have thought that this was a mobile game, but now that you say it, it's like it could it, easily be one. Yeah. It's it's just simple enough. Mm -hmm. I would I mean, do more of a tablet than a cell phone, but yeah, well, yeah, because it's <laughs> me. Imagine me <laughs> squinting at my little phone, like trying to make it bigger. Yeah. Like get bigger, I can't see. <laughs> Is that a super unit? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, battle of polytopia what a what a fantastic ride that was great i'm yes. so happy that you stumbled up on that one i know i was just scrolling through our vast library of games we have and i was going alphabetically so this was at the top and i was just like oh what is this it looks cute and then i i just <laughs> I, I, it was amazing so i'm very happy with this find yeah it was really good okay so battle of polytopia that was your game so my game is going to be in I'm going to say similar in quotes, a similar vein, only similar <laughs> in the sense that one, it's like an island because the, the, the whole land of Polytopia is basically like one big island mm -hmm. and it's like a low poly graphics mm -hmm. sort of game, right? right? Yeah. When you told me you were playing this game, I was like, oh, it looks, it looks pretty similar to mine. It's a really colorful and low poly type of. But that's really too. the only similarity is yeah. the, 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 the low poly and the vibrant colors is it. So mm -hmm. the enough fluffing it up. The <laughs> game that I played this week is called Islanders. Um, the picture for it on Steam says a minimalist city builder. And that sums it up. It's really great. So its tags on Steam are relaxing, city builder, strategy, puzzle, indie. Mm -hmm. I could, I could see all of that. This was um, developed and published by Grizzly Games. So <laughs> I, I kind of want to go and see what else they've done. Like I said, I, I, I really enjoyed this experience. It, it, this is definitely not my normal cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I'm normally playing like roguelites and some sort of action-esque type of game, you know? Yeah. Um, and this is really just a very relaxing, chill experience. The whole premise of this game is you are given a prestigiously generated island. So it's just a random hodgepodge of like mountain and sand beach, sandy beaches and some forests and stuff. And the game will give you buildings to place. Mm -hmm. 
And the buildings all get varying score depending upon what you place them near. So the whole point is to place your stuff in good places to get points. The more points you get, you will unlock more buildings to place. Mm -hmm. And once you do so many cycles of the place your buildings right, get points to get more buildings, you eventually get a little pop-up in your bottom right that's like, congratulations, you've unlocked a new island. And so you can either keep building on your current island because this is a very relaxing game and it's not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> um, or you can go onto a new island and it basically carries on your progress. So a at first I felt a little kind of like, what's the point when I first started playing it? Mm -hmm. But then the more and more I started placing things, I was like, okay. Because it's got this little meter in the bottom left that's like, it has the number, right? Like you have uh 250 out of 500 you know that you need to get the next unlock mm -hmm. and every time you place like when you're placing your little buildings you go and hover around on the map and it'll tell you like oh if you put this house here you get five points but if you put it over here you get 25 points yeah and so i'm just hovering over the map like all right where where can i put you <laughs> where can i where can i make this work and so it, it's really cool as far as kind of forcing you to try to think ahead because you don't know exactly what the game is going to give you as far as additional buildings further down the line. Mm -hmm. Like you can kind of tell because it seems like certain buildings are specific to certain islands. Like, you know, okay. like, um, like I did get one building called a, a Mason, right? Mm -hmm. That it's, it's meant for harvesting stone. And my first Island didn't get it, but I could, I could see why, because there were no real like mountains or cliffs on, yeah. on that Island. But the second island had a ton of cliffs. Mm -hmm. And so I kept getting mason buildings to play in the second island so <laughs> I could tack them onto the cliff and they're, they're pulling bricks off. It was great. Yeah. And then there was one island that had, because all they're all islands, hence the name, Islanders. Mm -hmm. but, but not all of them have an excess of sandy beaches, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one of them did. And so I got one place that was, uh, it was like a sand pit, I think is what it was called. So they like, they like <laughs> harvest sand for something i think they yeah. make brick bricks out of them right something and so that island let me get sand pits so so different islands might get different buildings but all of them will get like the same kind of base buildings yeah you get like well, a city center and that is kind of the uh, obviously the center of the city you're supposed to build because uh you get buildings called houses and mansions that want to be closer to the city center and mm -hmm. farther away from manufacturing type buildings mm -hmm. so Everything will tell you when you hover over it, like, hey, this building gets you a base score of plus five, and you get, like, an extra plus two for every house that's near it, or a minus four for every lumberjack that's nearby. Yeah. And, and stuff like that. So it's a really relaxed experience. Like, I think I got to, like, 5,000 was my score at the end. I mm -hmm. went through, like, four islands, five islands before, because if you, um, basically, if you run out of plays before you unlock the next island, it's mm -hmm. game over. Okay. So so I made it to like island number five. Um and then yeah, I, I started to I started to like run out of room and I was like, oh no, I can't put anything close enough to the city center for it to be worth a hoot. And there's already so many masons on these cliffs. Because <laughs> a lot of times the buildings don't want to be near to similar buildings. So it's like this building will give you a plus five, but it's minus five for every other mason it's near. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh so like, where do I put you? So um yeah, I, I, I really liked it. It's like I said, and it had just the most relaxing soundtrack. It was just so chill and you could hear like the ocean waves coming up on the island. And I'm just <laughs> like, just chilling, having a good time. Um, I really like, honestly, I feel like this might be more up your alley. I know you've been, you've been eyeing a couple of games that are like this. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think, I think I'm definitely going to kind of twist your arm and make you try it out. <laughs> yeah no i think i'll definitely try this and i think it, it'd be it'd either be one that i'm sitting there for for a very long time just playing because you can or it'll be one that i go on and i do a little bit and then i'll exit and then come back the next day and do a bit more oh and that was one thing if you don't um if you don't fail right like you don't run out of moves mm -hmm. you can come back whenever it saves your progress yeah because like i i did that i played this over a couple of different days Mm -hmm. Where I, I played a played a little while, you know, earn a couple thousand points here, log off, earn a couple thousand points there, log off. Yeah. And so I I I, I drew it out over the course of like three days. Mm -hmm. So it was not continuous playthrough. I, I do like that that 
it was refreshing to me being that I'm like a roguelite person, you know, and so I'm so used to every run is self-contained and you have to do it all now or you start over. Yeah. Um, this was nice to have something where it was very chill and kind of like, hey, man, you could um, you could put that house down or you could come back tomorrow. It's up to you. <laughs> so very, very relaxed. It was nice to have like a, a cider up here and just chilling, building build my little island. It looks really good. I, I will definitely try to play this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. Like I said, I don't think it's 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 a relatively. I mean, relatively new. It's twenty one. <laughs> it's twenty twenty one now. This came out in twenty nineteen. So relatively yeah. new as far as the video game industry is concerned. <laughs> and it's actually dirt cheap. This game is five dollars, four ninety nine. Yeah. So if you're looking for just a chill, relaxing experience, like even if you can just get a modicum of relaxation out of this, it's worth five bucks. Yeah, it's got great reviews. Like realizing that now, like I I bought this a while back after watching a YouTuber play it, and mm -hmm. it fell into the mountain of shame that is my game catalog. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I dug it up. But knowing how how cheap this is now, I'm probably gonna buy copies of this for like my family and stuff. Um, yeah, because I could see like my younger brother and maybe even my older brother both enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I I, I want to support stuff like this. So Grizzly Games, y'all did a fantastic job. I don't know what else you have done. <laughs> but this is great and you deserve all the love and support okay so they've 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 done one other game called super flight mm -hmm. that looks like it has a very similar art style as far as this like polygon sort of thing mm -hmm. but you are it looks like you're a bird and you're flying through like cliffscapes yeah i saw that so that looks kind of neat i'll have to check that guy out that, that was apparently their first baby that was out in 2017 so I'll have to look that guy up and see what I can find. But yeah, Grizzly Games. Uh, Islanders by Grizzly Games. <laughs> Quite relaxing. I, I had a ton of fun with it. I, I want to go back and see if I can get a higher score. Because mm -hmm. when you do get your score, it shows you the leaderboard. And naturally, I felt like I did great getting 5,000 points. I did no. not. <laughs> I, I, I did not do great. I think I was like in the like 500s. Like, yeah, like I was in the 500s somewhere next to a whole bunch of other people that had the exact same score. <laughs> so apparently like 5,001 is pretty common. Yeah. So I got to do better. Got to do better. I wonder if I could break 10. Maybe I could break 10,000. That'd be, that'd, that'd be like, mm, just so that'd be so great. <laughs> yeah. All right. So those were our two games this week. We had the battle of polytopia and Islanders, both some low poly, I, I hope that's the right, I hope I'm using the right term for that. Low poly graphics, <laughs> but really fun times, you know? Yeah. I, I love games that prove you do not have to have like hyper realism graphics to have a great time. In yeah, I don't even really like the hyper realism. I feel like we've talked about that before. I don't care for the hyper realistic type well, of yeah. graphics. But but I, I love ones that even like kind of take a turn back, you know, and they like kind of prove that like, hey, this is like, this is stuff that could have been made like on an old computer and played on an old computer and you would have had a great time back then and you're having a great time now. So, yeah. So, so those were fantastic. Now it is time for our board game. We are super excited to talk about. We got the Stardew Valley board game. Yes. We, uh, we, we were lucky enough to get in on the ground floor. I think um, with this one, Erica had noticed that uh, Concerned Ape had tweeted like, hey, y'all, I did a thing. And he had like a link to his board game. And she was like, this is cool. And I was like, I'm buying it. <laughs> like, and at, at, literally, as she was talking about it, um, I, I was ordering it. So <laughs> I wasted no time. And then, like, within 24 hours, I think they had sold out of all the copies, mm -hmm. which was a bit sad. But, I mean, he's already said that they're working on, on more of it. So Stardew Valley, the board game. This was designed by Eric Barone. Hopefully I said that right. It might be Baroni, um, who is Concerned <laughs> Ape. And Cole Med... Medeiros? Medeiros. Hope I said your name right. Fantastic game. Uh, the artists were Alex Vandera, Gustavo Gus Gutierrez, Justin Williams, Luke I Aiello? Aiello? Um, wait, there's four more. Tell me who the other artists are. I need to know. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, Christine uh, McTurnan, Ed Puella, Rachel Lapido, and Gina Salvador. 
So they all did a fantastic job. The art for this game, it was so, so great to see like pixel art characters being like interpreted like in actual like drawings and sketches and artwork and all that. I, I thought they mm-hmm. did such a fantastic job. Like I, I really, I really, really enjoyed this one. Mm-hmm. But enough gushing from me. Erica, you want to you talk about maybe a <laughs> little bit of the gameplay <laughs> instead of me gushing over the game? Yeah, so Stardew Valley, the board game, it follows very closely to Stardew Valley, the video game, in that you have inherited this farm from your grandfather, and he has a set of goals for you to complete during your year. So this game only takes place over a year. I think the video game is two years. Um, but in the year, you'll you'll randomly choose what your grandfather's goals are. Um, I think the ones that we got were upgrade tools, make friends, and own farm animals. That's it. Yeah. Um, so you have those goals, and then you also have the community center, like the the video game, and the community center are different little bundles that you need to donate um, different resources to. Um, and we had one that was just money, one that was animal products. Uh, I'm trying to think about that. There's so many different bundles that you can get. And they're all random. So all of the things that you're, yeah, you're getting. Yeah, they all have little, little decks you draw from. Yeah. So, so no one game is ever going to be the same, um, which is good. Um, but so during your turn, you have the option to move. So you, you can either perform an action Hold on. <laughs> Before you get to the action. Um, so each turn is a day in the season. So there's a little season deck and you start out with spring. Yes. Yep. Just like in the game. Yeah. So you start out with spring and you, you know, you randomize this deck also. You flip over the first card of spring and it tells you either it's an event card. So it might be the, the egg festival and nothing really happens that day. Or it could be usually it's just a card that has different little symbols on it and the little symbols do different things so if it's um the a little cat or, that means that the pet wanders which is basically whoever has the pet is the first is the starting player so you move that fr- from one person to another um there's a little gift icon which means if you have any friends um which are the the different um the npcs in the world yeah, I couldn't think of a name, but the different Stardew Valley <laughs> people. The citizens. The citizens of Stardew Valley. Um, if you become friends with them, all of them have a little option, um, a little gift thing underneath their in, on their card underneath their name that says what they do for, for you if you get the gift action. There's some that could be like a Joja Cola little image, and that's actually like a bad thing. You have to put a Joja Cola tile onto the board. And those are also random. And when you flip it over, it'll tell you. So one of them was like the mountain lake. And it was like, you can no longer fish at the mountain lake. Your permit is required. You have to pay five gold to remove this requirement or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then the other one is, you know, you can sell items. So it's like a little sell bundle thing. I'm sure there's other ones, but those are some of the basic like actions that will show up on the, the, the day cards. And when that happens, you know, you perform all those actions first. So you, you do the gifts, you you switch the animal, you do all the stuff that you need to. And then it's the planning phase. So you start, this is a one to four player game. So you're all working cooperatively towards the same goal. So during the planning phase, you guys all sit there and you discuss, okay, well, we need animals, but we don't have the, the coop yet. So I'm going to go to the mine to get whatever we need for that. And then... I'm going to water the crops, so I'm going to stay here. Okay, well, I'm going to go fishing. So you guys all decide where you're going to go. And you get, you each have like a little uh, player token. And you you set up the board where you're going to start. So you put your little player piece wherever you're going to start. And you can say, I'm going to start at the mine. So you put your little player pawn over at the mine. I could start at the ocean and go fishing, whatever. Um, and then... Once you decide what your your first action is going to be, you can either make an action, then move and take another action, or take an action and then take another action immediately where you're at. Um, so the benefit of moving is that there are forageables on the map, just like in the video game. And when you're moving along the trails, you can pick up one of the forageables. You don't know what they are. They're all 
again, randomized and they're face down so you don't see what it is. But if you walk by um, a forgeable on your path, you can pick it up and you, you get whatever it is. Um, so that's a benefit to the movement instead of just doing action and another action. But you can also, you know, go to the store, start at the store, buy seeds, and then move. And as soon as you buy seeds, they're already planted. So you can you, you can buy seeds and then move to your farm and then water them. And that moves them down on the track um, as far as harvesting. And so there's a lot of little nuances in this game. But it, it's very much like the video game where you're trying to do <laughs> all of these tasks and balance it well enough yeah. to get the goals that your grandfather has set out and the community bundle has for you because if you don't meet all of those goals you don't win <laughs> yeah the only way yeah the, the, the victory conditions are complete grandpa's wishes and all the community center right that's yeah. that's, that's how you win mm -hmm. so i mean like you said just like the game it's the whole action economy sort of thing it's like you know mm -hmm. you've got so much you have, you have a lot of things to do and a limited period of time in which to do them yes so and um i did think it was really neat so like you were talking about how you were talking about how the uh, the the days are determined by the cards. You draw a new card every day, right? Mm -hmm. I did think that it had a little mechanic for depending upon the number of players you have or how experienced you are with the game. Um, you kind of change the number of cards you include. So it has like like a very base amount. Like, oh, make sure you've got five spring cards, mm -hmm. but you can add more spring cards to it if you have more people or if you want to like, you know, have it take more time, kind of thing. Yeah. So. I also really enjoyed that all, all of the objectives, like you talked about how grandpa's wishes were like, you know, upgrade your tools and have some barn animals. Well, all of the objectives scale with the number of players you have. Yes. So if grandpa says you got to have chickens on your farm, you've got to have four chickens if you have four players. Yeah. And if the community center bundle says, hey, you got to turn in an egg, you have to turn in four eggs because you have four people. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really cool because it's like, you know, it, thinking about it like if you had multiple players if you didn't do something like that more people would just make it easy yeah you would be like okay well i'm just gonna sit here and try to collect from the chickens all day which you kind of have to do sometimes because that action is very it, it's dependent on literally the roll of the dice so you get three dice and you're supposed to roll them and if it lands with the chicken icon then you can collect from the chicken and basically it, it's got each of the different farm animals on them and yeah. you have to roll them in order to collect from them. And so we tried collecting from ours and they never gave us anything. <laughs> several, several times. I think we got lucky. Like at the very end, I think we drew a... Because uh, certain things you do in other places, like at the mines and stuff like that, or with, with you, if you make friends with the villagers, you can have events happen, mm -hmm. event cards. And I think we had an event that was like, all of your animals produce. And yeah. so, we, so we got it. We, that's how we got our eggs for the, for the, the, the animal product bundle. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then we didn't worry about them. We're like, whatever. Because you could also pet them. To make them happy. Because I think to if make you make them, them happy. happy, that... I think it increases the quality of the egg you get. Because yeah. every every resource, just like in Stardew Valley, all of the like crops and items you can get all had a, a regular quality and a star quality. Mm -hmm. So I think you could do a thing where... Uh, there were certain actions that could happen that would turn your crops. It would let you flip a crop and make it a gold star crop instead of yeah. just a regular crop. So instead of being worth five gold, it'd be worth six, mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I thought that was pretty neat. Like it, they, they just did such a fantastic job capturing the essence of the Stardew Valley board, ga uh, Stardew Valley video game in a board game. They did even to the, uh, your backpack carrying capacity where it's like, you can only carry six items. And if you have any more, you have to discard something. I swear, if they somehow, because we haven't, obviously we haven't played through all, we haven't seen all the cards yet, because we've only played it, like, twice now. Yeah. If there's a card in there that's like, Pierre sends you a note of a flyer saying, buy a bigger backpack, I'm going to be like, I swear I'm going to throw this deck across the room. Because <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that happens in the game, like, you, you max out your backpack and Pierre's all like, hey man, come buy a backpack so you can carry more cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it was great. The, yeah, this is a great game. I think they did a really great job of capturing the video game in a board game format, which I'm sure is probably pretty difficult. <laughs> Thinking about it, because like like we said before, like this game has so many different things you can do. Mm -hmm. 
I think they did a really great job as far as finding a way to like quantify it and narrow it down. Yeah. Apparently, there's also a way you can get married. We we haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, we didn't we didn't encounter there, that because there is a <laughs> there's a spouse token you can get. It's like how do you how do you marry? I yeah. Mean, I didn't draw the mermaid pendant icon. You know. Uh, uh, oh, I know. Item and that. So that that was one thing that you're saying drawing a mermaid pendant. There was one review that I had read before we got this game that their main complaint was that the game is too it's too random <laughs> it, because everything that you do is is random so like having your animals produce is rolling dice um the how far you get in the mines or what you get from the mines is rolling dice um if you're opening geodes that's rolling dice the fishing you're drawing fish from a, a big bag of fish and trash so that's random um the different forgeables that are there all the different objective cards all of like everything is random obviously it's a board game <laughs> there's randomization it's it's gonna happen um that's, that's kind of the, the nature of most games <laughs> yeah i think their main complaint was i think when they played through they had found one of their objectives was like the quality fish bundle or the the legendary fish bundle and okay and so every time they went fishing you know, if you catch a fish, you replace it with a new one. They, in their course of their game, they never drew a legendary fish to put out there, which I could see happening. And that could be frustrating if you literally spend your two turns every day just fishing and you don't ever see a legendary fish come out to be able to donate to the bundle. That could be a bit upsetting. I, I could see that. But I, 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 again, I'm going to say that that does kind of go... That coincides with the nature of the game, uh, of the nature of the video game kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. there is, there are some items that if you don't, if you don't manage your time properly and play your cards right, and, you know, and I, I mean, I need that like the the the, the metaphor or whatever, <laughs> um, you know, metaphorically play your cards right. Um, you might not get all the items for the community center within the two years before you know. Yeah. You know, definitely. Grandpa comes to pass judgment upon you. <laughs> you, know? um, you, might, you might not get it and so like yeah i understand their complaint from a a connoisseur of board games perspective it's like i get why that sucks yeah but as a i love stardew valley <laughs> and i've played many a game of stardew valley i understand why it's like that because yeah. being like that it's it's like stardew valley yeah like i said they literally just took a digital game and put it on a board. Mm -hmm. Even even the ugly RNG parts, you know? <laughs> so, I get it. I can understand their complaints. It does not make me love this game any less. Yeah, it's still a really good game. It, it does help that we won our first and only game that we've ever played. It, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. We gotta play it again, though. I need to get, I wanna get Jacob out here so we can play some. Mm -hmm. I think I think he might get a kick out of it. Lord knows he will try to go and romance Leah or something, you know. No, Haley. He he likes Haley. He likes Haley. The yeah. photographer girl. <laughs> Still. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we need to talk about for this game. There's a lot to talk about in this game. Um there's just so much. There's there there are a lot so we, many we, we'll things. Pro we'll probably have to go and make like a standalone video of this just, game. <laughs> talking about all the different pieces of this game but mm -hmm. the moral of the story is if you like stardew valley odds are you will like the stardew valley board game mm -hmm. I, I i i'm gonna say like that's like granted it's not mutually exclusive but yeah but i, I think it's i think it's I'm, I'm pretty confident in that statement so <laughs> we'll we'll have a link to the um to the stardew valley shop in the in the in the in the field notes I know right now it's not available for purchase, but I think they do have like an email list you can sign up for so you can find out when it is available for sale. Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably also put a link to Concerned Apes Twitter because that is the place to be if you want yes. information on what is going on with Stardew Valley or the Stardew <laughs> Valley board game. Or if you just want to know how Concerned Ape is. I mean, you know, Guy made a fantastic game that many people love. So. Yeah, and you're still updating it and making bug fixes and everything and even with the board game they've been very um forward about if you have pieces that were 
cut horribly or missing components like they were very open about reach out to us yeah. and we will get your replacements so i think that's really great yeah because most most folks have been like it's out you bought it not our problem <laughs> it's like is it actually broken no we'll deal with it yeah. not concerned ape though no guy's on top <laughs> of it so on top of making a great game he's got fantastic customer service so mm -hmm. what's not to love <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was our board game. So it's Stardew Valley, the board game. We already talked about our video games. We had Battle for Polytopia and Islanders. Now it's time for Kickstarter Corner. So super exciting. So uh, we talk about a Kickstarter project that each of us has backed uh, within the past week or that we backed previously that is coming due soon. Um, coming due, I mean, the, the Kickstarter campaign is going to be ending soon. So if you want to jump on the bandwagon and give these beautiful people your money, uh, we'll have links to all of these projects in the, in our field notes, as well as on our website at unearthinggames.com. So let's go ahead and jump right into the Kickstarter projects that we've backed. Erica, tell us about the one you backed this week. Yeah. So the game I backed this week is So You've Been Eaten, and this is by Ludi Creations. Uh, they currently have uh, so the project will be funded on March 30th, so there's still some time for that. Um, the premise of this board game, so this one is a one to two player, so I, I've been mentioning that I wanted to try to find more of like the, the, the solitaire type game, solo, single player type experiences. <laughs> uh, so this is one of them. So So You've Been Eaten is, <clears throat> the premise is you are a deep space miner. And you are going out to collect six different gems. And the, <laughs> the only place that these gems are found are inside this beast. So you've been eaten. You go into the beast to try to get these gems. And um, it's, it's a you versus the monster game. So you can play two players where one person plays the monster and one, per one person plays the, the miner. But... Um, the whole premise of the game is you're trying to get the six gems before the monster can fully digest you. And so <laughs> the way that, <laughs> <Okay>. that <laughs> the way that that happens is the the monster is trying to get four different bacteria into his digestive system to digest you. So he needs these four different bacteria in order to do that. And so that's his goal. Your goal is to get the six gems and get out. And you've only got a limited amount of time. Um, from what I've read through the, the Kickstarter pledge and everything, um, you, there is another ending to this game where you don't collect all six gems and the monster doesn't fully digest you. So you just come out the other end a changed person. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, all I can imagine is that that scene from Men in Black where he like runs up to the alien and he's like, "Eat me!" You know, that's, that's all I can think of is like what what this guy did to this interstellar beast <laughs> that has crystals growing in its stomach. Um, but yeah, so your whole objective is to get these six crystals and get out. And there's different things you can find along the way to help you. Um, some that have been left by other space miners that were unsuccessful in their mission and were digested. But, um, but yeah, I think this sounds like a really interesting game. It says that it's got a zero player mode, which I'm I was about in. to ask. I, cause like, it's, it's all like on their Kickstarter page. It says, so you've eaten, so you've been eaten can be played as two players, minor versus beast, mm -hmm. one player, minor versus hibernating beast, one player, beast versus robot minor yeah. or zero players where it is the hibernating beast versus the robot minor. I really want to see how that's done. Yeah. Like, how? It does say, nope, zero players does not mean that the game will set up and play itself. And no, it probably does not count as a play if you decide not to play it. <laughs> yes, it does seem to fit the times we are now living in. <laughs> However you look at it, having the two AIs play each other is possible and a conversation starter for the non-board game geeks wandering the earth. <laughs> So I think that that'd be interesting to to see. I've never we, seen a, a self playable game. We, we we definitely have to try that and like just talk about like what kind of age we live in when board games can play themselves. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
<laughs> Sounds so interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for this. I'm excited for us to do the one player and even the two player variants taking turns being the monster versus the minor. And I, I the art looks really cute. Um, so yeah, I, I'm excited for this game. I, I backed it as soon as I saw it. <laughs> yeah, it looks really great. And what this um this Kickstarter project comes due on. Tell me the date. Um, comes due on March thirtieth. Mm-hmm. So when this episode drops, you'll still have a little more than a week. Yeah. You'll have you'll have eight days. So jump on that bandwagon. It is. It, it sounds amazing. I'm not gonna lie. And I think you can get the game for what for thirty bucks. Oh yeah. So my so my problem with Kickstarter games is that I have to back at the collector's editions or else I feel like I'm missing out. Unless like the collector's editions don't give you too much extra. I think there's been a few that I haven't done at the highest level. But this one I did. Um that's Sorry. neither here nor there. But something I wanted to mention is that um <laughs> this game right now is on tabletop sim and uh tabletopia? Tabletopia? Ooh. I don't okay. know how you say it. Um, so you can always go there and try it out before you actually go and back it if you want. Okay. Well, I, I'll make sure I have a link for the, for the tabletop sim, uh, and tabletopia, topia. Yeah. I don't know. However it's pronounced. <laughs> I'll have links to those in the, in the field notes as well, as well as in the, the description below the video. Mm-hmm. So we'll have those in there. Um, you know me, I'm a sucker for like, like Regency and stuff when, if they give you the option to try their game before you give them money, it's like. These guys are literally like this is this is the perfect sales pitch for a board game. Yeah, like, go try it out first, play around. Yeah, if play, you play like it in it, a digital setting. Game. And if you're just like, eh, then don't buy it. You have it in digital. But if you love it, yeah, buy it and give them the get the super ultra deluxe edition that comes with metal pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a sucker for those those editions. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, say, so, um, okay. So you've been eaten. Sounds amazing. I'm super excited about that one. So the project that I backed this week is called Pagan, Fate of Roanoke. And so this one is a two-player deduction card game, is, is how it is described. It's described as a, a deduct, deduction card-driven game. So this is set in like the colonial pilgrims witch trials sort of era you know mm-hmm. what i'm talking about with like the guys have like random belt buckles on their hats and stuff like that <laughs> it's that that era that's stereotypical <laughs> that's stereotypical I, mean, I bet you there's a card in this game that someone has that I I, bet it's you. on the cover art. oh it's on the box <laughs> the witch hunter yes okay so the two players one person plays as the witch and one person plays as the witch hunter okay and so this but this seems kind of like a it's a deck building drafting sort of game. Okay. So basically both of you are trying to basically leverage the village against each other. Mm-hmm. So the 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 elders of the village know that there is a witch among them and so they have called upon a witch hunter to come and suss out the witch from amongst, you know, the faithful. Mm-hmm. And so the the witch hunter's whole thing is he has to figure out who the witch is out of all of the different townsfolk, because you lay out a board of them, you know, to determine who, who all's out there. Uh-huh. So he has to determine who of the townsfolk is the actual witch, while the witch is using the townsfolk to get them to, to collect ingredients for her potions. And okay. so she is basically trying to craft, finish crafting all of her potions and to strengthen her familiar before the end of the game. Okay. So like like her whole thing is like she needs to finish casting her spell and then make her her monster protector strong enough to kill the witch hunter, basically. Okay. This is her goal before she gets caught. Well, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> you don't want so, to be burned at the stake. I mean, nobody really does, right? <laughs> I mean, so that that's the base premise of the game. It looks fantastic. I, I honestly am super excited to to try this one out. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of like higher level Kickstarters, I did pledge higher into this particular one because they did say that they're working on an expansion for it yeah. uh, called Beyond the Palisade. Uh, so I, I pledged up to the level to get that. So I'll get that as well as any other kind of uh, stretch goals that they're going to get. Mm-hmm. I, I'm super excited for this one. I love the art style. I cannot stress how much I love the art style. Mm-hmm. This reminds me very much of Darkest Dungeon. Yeah. That whole kind of dark and gritty comic book style. 
Oh my gosh, I forgot to mention. This is by um, a guy named Alexander Omer. Uh, Omer? I hope I said his name correctly. <laughs> he is the CEO of Wormgold and Digidiced. So, very, 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 very excited to try his game out. So Yeah, and this is, I, I scrolled all the way towards the bottom of their Kickstarter page. This one is also on Tabletopia. Topia. Tabletopia? Oh, <laughs> fantastic. So I will make sure that we have a link for that as well in the uh, in the description. Now we've got to go and try these games out. Like we're, I know we're, we're not doing our due diligence. We're just like this game looks amazing. Have my money. We're not even doing our homework. What kind of shoppers are we? We're either the I best read through or the, the campaigns. worst. <laughs> no, they they did a great job selling it to me. Like I mean, we've seen plenty of bad Kickstarter campaigns. These ones, they do such a great job of of pitching it to you. Mm-hmm. So. This one is also coming due on March 30th, so you will still have, you'll have about a week after the video drops to go and support this bad boy. Mm-hmm. So super excited about that. One other project I did want to just do a quick mention of. I'm not going to do the full the full dive like we do for the rest <laughs> of these guys. Um, there is an expansion on Kickstarter right now for Everdell. We talked about that in one of our first episodes. It is the worker placement animal personification <laughs> sort of secret of nim style kind of thing you know with the animals living in whatever <laughs> <laughs> really great game we loved it I, I actually bought the collector's edition of everdell just like a week or two ago super excited about that i love it you build the tree on your on your desk um still <laughs> there they are kickstarting two expansions new leaf and mistwood uh, as well as I think if you fund high enough into it, you can get like the full collection where it's the game, the expansions and a humongous flipping box to put it all in. So that is active right now. It is active until the 25th. So that'll be, I think, towards the end of the week that this episode drops. Mm-hmm. So so I would say if, if you really enjoyed Everdell and you can't wait to try out some of their new expansions, because I think this game actually has a ton of expansions. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. If you if you like Everdell. Check it out. I will have a link to this bad boy in the field notes as well. Um, so yeah. Everdell. New Leaf and Mistwood. <laughs> All right. So those were our three projects. We had So You've Been Eaten. We had Pagan, uh, The Fate of Roanoke. And Everdell, New Leaf and Mistwood. Yeah, so go and check those bad boys out. If you if you are a fan of any of those, like I said, check out their campaigns. Check them out on Kickstarter or on not Kickstarter. <laughs> obviously obviously check them out on kickstarter <laughs> check them out on like tabletop sim and tabletopia and all that jazz so mm-hmm. go try them out you know fall in love with them and then give them your money so that they can give you an amazing board game so. <laughs> but that is gonna be it for us for this week thank you all for uh for taking the time to listen i hope that y'all have been enjoying this um i hope that you like the kickstarter corner i know we have a good time talking about it because we are a sucker for crowdfunding projects especially when it comes to board games and video games so yeah yeah That's going to be it for us for this week, and we will catch you guys next time. So, toodles. Bye.